The American astronomer Carl Sagan once said of the Greek philosopher and educator Plato that he taught contempt for the real world and disdain for the practical application of scientific knowledge. Plato simply valued thoughts more than deeds. Fortunately, his students respected both. Plato started the first educational institution in the West and is known by his wide range of writings, including a treatise on the nature of reality, the Plato's Cave. He learned to love learning from his mentor, one of the founders of Western philosophy, Socrates, who became critical of the warlike mentality of the Athenian leaders. He was eventually arrested and convicted for treason, being an atheist and corrupting the youth, there was no indication which charge the government thought worse. Although he could have escaped prison, he wanted to show that a philosopher was not afraid of death, so he drank the poison hemlock. Plato's most famous students were Aristotle and Theophrastus. Both died from natural causes. Aristotle was hired as a tutor for Alexander the Great. Later, when he was about 50 years old, he returned to Athens and began his own educational institution, the Lyceum, where he wrote an astounding number of books on diverse subjects that made breakthroughs in science, communications, politics, rhetoric, and ethics. He was the earliest known writer to describe the phenomenon of light noticed through a camera obscura that eventually led to a further understanding of how the eyes and the photographic medium work. Theophrastus, the subject of the bus in figure 6.2, worked with Aristotle, who gave him all of his writings for safekeeping. He also was named head of the Lyceum that at one point had about 2,000 students. His contributions in science, philosophy, and language are established by his writings. Theophrastus thought that happiness came from outside sources and believed that life is ruled by fortune, not wisdom. Sort of a modern-day spin of it's not what you know, but whom you know. In 6.2, he holds a text that makes a brief reference to different plants. That's because he is often called the founder of botany for his early classifications of vegetation. With websites composed of many moving parts, code, images, applications, databases, and so on, a graphic designer not only needs to be innovative and skilled, but also highly organized with a simple classification system so that work is never lost in the fog of cyberspace.